And our final UI function is called UI run scan. This is the main loop that will prompt the user and coordinate the scan. So we're going to need a value to search for and an input string and our main scan. So first thing we'll do is create a scan via the UI function and then we'll just spin in a loop asking the user what they want to do. So we'll prompt enter the next value or and then we'll give them some options make a few of those. So these are the options we'll provide. If they press I, that's search for increased values. If they press D, search for decreased. If they press M, that will be print matches. P to poke an address. N for a new scan. and finally Q to quit the program so we don't need this last one. Just add a new line there. So now we'll use fgets again to uh, get the input. Let's put a new line after their input. Okay, so based on the input we can just look at the first character and pick which option we want to do. So first option is I which is search for increased values so we can just call update scan passing it our scan and the condition is increased and the value is irrelevant and once we've updated the scan we'll print out how many matches are left using our get match count function now we can just copy all that for the decreased case so change that to a D and just change the condition to decreased, so that's trivial. Uh, the next one was print the matches. So in the case of M, we already have a function to do that. And then it was poke, then new scan, then quit. So for P, we already have a function to do that, so we just forward it on. And we just need to pass the details, we need the H proc and the data size. And the next one was new scan. So first of all we free our current scan. and just make another call to UI new scan so it'll prompt for a fresh set of um, information from the user and the quit case we just need to free the scan and we'll just bail all the way out of this function and if it's none of those the default case we assume that the user has entered the next value to search for. So we'll just convert their input to an integer and update the scan. 
of the equals condition and the value. And again we'll print how many matches are left. Using get match count. And break out of that. So that's our main run loop. So at the start we make a new scan, at which point we prompt the user for the information needed. Then we display the menu of options, prompt for some input. Based on the input, update the scan or print information or whatever they the user asks for. And loop round again. So now we can get rid of all our test code in main and instead just call UI run scan directly. Let's try and compile that now. Error start value undeclared 339. Ah, I named the variable start val, not start value. Let's try again. Okay, that's built, so now it's time to put it to the test on a real program. I have here Solitaire and we'll use it to track down the location of the score. So let's run task list. Sol is the Solitaire process, which is 4520. So I can now run memscan. So it asks me for the PID, which is 4520. Data size is 4. And the start value is 0. So it's performed the initial update and it's found about 150,000 matches. So now if I go back to Solitaire and make the score 20, I can type 20 in here, and it's already isolated one match. So I can print that with M, and it says the score's dropped to 18. Let's have a look. Yes it has, so now I can use P to poke that address. The address is 0xAA930 and let's say 20,000. Let's have a look at Solitaire and my score is now 20,000. So that works lovely for the case where you know the exact value. If we quit from that, I also have Minesweeper here and Minesweeper has a, a time clock on it so that's good when you don't want to enter the exact value as such, you just want to enter whether a, a value is increased or decreased. So let's run task list again. Get win mine, which is 7096. Run memscan, 7096. And the data size is 4. And the start value, we'll put it as unknown for now. So it's found you know, almost a meg worth of matches. So if we start playing Minesweeper and let the clock go up, so now we can hit I for value increased, 373 matches found, let it increase some more, I again, 25 matches found, so at this point we could use M to print all the matches out, there they are, let's see we can let it increase a bit more, I again, 23 matches found. Each time we're refining the search slightly more, although it didn't have any that time. There we go, two matches found now, so we can print those. That's obviously something else completely, but it was on 42 there. So that looks like the time address. So we can use poke, and the address is 100579C and we can set the value to 1 to reset our time. So if we look there our time has been reset. So that appears to be working fine and that's how you write a memory scanner. So thanks for persevering if you've made it all the way through. I appreciate you watching. As always any comments or questions you have are most welcome as indeed are 5 star ratings. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.